was founded in 2010 by a local restaurateur who at the time was trying to get more local food into the hands of the chefs of his restaurants. And he came up against a problem, which is that local food was expensive for him and in short supply. And he realized that if he was having a hard time getting his hands on this stuff, what are other people doing? And so he started pulling on that thread and came to understand that there's a real crisis in our food system. Um, and that is that, you know, if you have money and you have transportation, you can have whatever you want, whenever you want it. And if you make bad choices, that's sort of on you, you go take a Lipitor and you're done. But there's about a fifth of our population that just doesn't have those options because they live in neighborhoods that don't have access to healthy foods. They don't have a lot of money. Um, they don't have private transportation. And so they are living on foods that are basically causing diseases. These are highly processed shelf stable foods that are high in salt, high in sugar, high in fat. Um, lots of high fructose corn syrup. Usually they're packaged and they are cheap at the point of sale and devastatingly expensive in terms of public health. So um, what happens with um, in, in these neighborhoods uh, you have, and, and it's true across the country, but, but our focus at Arcadia is on what do we do about places where people really don't have any other options. Um, and, and in those neighborhoods, you have elevated rates of um, chronic disease, including hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, half of all forms of cancer are associated with foods that people eat, um, obesity, and all of its associated problems. So um, Michael Babin, the founder of Arcadia, started Arcadia in 2010 in order to sort of innovate some solutions to this. And the food system is a big, complex beast. Um, and what we do just outside the gates of Fort Belvoir on an historic property that used to be owned by George Washington is that we have a farm. Uh, it's a production farm. So we're growing food for human consumption. We're adding to that supply of fresh, healthy food. Um, we also use our farm as a campus for school children to uh, turn them on to healthy food and get them wanting to eat their vegetables. It's pretty easy when you turn them loose on a farm, these little kids will eat turnips like goats, they'll eat beets, they'll eat tomatoes, they'll eat lettuce, no problem. Um, one of the other challenges that we have in the food system, um, and one of the reasons why the food is in short supply, especially in low-income neighborhoods, is because there's just not enough farmers. Av the average age of an American farmer in the U.S. now is about um, uh, almost 60 years old, and so that means in the next 20 years, about 700,000 American farmers are going to be leaving the profession, and that means that we're not going to have a lot of people raising food in America. So it's it, it, it sort of creeps up onto being um, not just a public health problem and an economic problem, but also a national security problem. Um, because if we're more reliant on other countries to send us food, then we're more vulnerable, vulnerable and we have fewer strategic options. Um, so Arcadia being on land that George Washington uh, once, once owned um, and being surrounded on three sides by Fort Belvoir, 15 miles from the Pentagon, um, we thought it made sense uh, and applied for and got funding for in 2016 to start training military veterans to be farmers. Um, I'm not military, uh, but I spent a fair amount of time downrange with folks in the military. I, I was a reporter and I covered the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, more Iraq, spent a lot of time with Marines especially. And I came away with a real appreciation for the resourcefulness and the physical toughness and the mental toughness of folks that are in the military. Um, asked to do things that they were not trained for um, and figured it out. And so when I got to Arcadia in 2013, um, I fell in on a staff that was thinking about farmer training and they were thinking about veterans. It sort of made some sense. And so I brought in my networks and uh, we were approved in 2016 by the USDA to start training military veterans. And now our, the veteran farmer program has trained, we have about 150 graduates and we have an incoming class um, on our annual training class. We have an incoming class of 43 people mm -hmm. from all different services, all uh, including the Coast Guard, every service is represented. Um, we have people from 21 different states and um, the, the training happens in sort of three pieces. Um, there's the Veteran Farmer Reserve. This is the biggest one, the biggest class by numbers. Um, it meets one weekend a month, Saturday and Sunday, 12 months a year. So it's a year long training program. And we take trainees through from like what a farmer's doing in January all the way through the growing season, including 
an intense weekend of tractor training, safe operations and maintenance, and, a, and an intense weekend of chainsaw training because farmers really need to know how to run chainsaws safely. Um, and uh, and we, we get people from sort of, as I said, you know, all, all kinds of states and, and all levels of experience. We have a lot of people who come in who just kind of feel the calling to farm, don't know anything about it, have never grown a thing, but just are exploring it, but really think they want to do it. And then we have people who already own farms and who are already working on farms. We have um, active duty, we have veterans, we have caregivers and family members. And farming like the military is a family affair and farming like the military is a lifestyle. So we welcome everybody in the household to these training sessions. Um, so that's the Veteran Farmer Reserve. And, uh, and that's the one where we get uh, the most people and, um, and probably the most numerous outcomes. The next level of training is the Veteran Farm Fellowship. Uh, the fellowship is an on-farm paid job um, apprenticed, I'm sorry, my cat is now walking all over, <laughs> apprenticed to our professional farmers. Um, it goes nine months or less. Uh, we've recently uh, rearranged it um, in response to requests from folks who are interested in it to make it shorter, to make it longer, to work a couple of days a week or, or uh, a couple of hours each day. So we're trying to be really flexible with folks, but this is on-farm paid training, which is really unusual. It's very hard to get a paid training job on a farm. Mm -hmm. um, farmers, beginning farmers, folks without experience can do a lot of damage on a farm. And so a professional farm is doesn't really like to hire people without any experience. We are very happy to hire you <laughs> without any experience. And you learn from our farmers, you pitch in, and by the end of it, hopefully you understand a lot more about vegetable farming and you've mastered some you know, greenhouse techniques and low tillage and riding around on the tractor and understand crop planning and all that. And we welcome the farm fellows who are being paid to join us in the reserve weekend training program, which again is one weekend a month for 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, the final piece that we do is uh, started in 2018 and it's our veteran farm incubator. So if you've graduated from one of the other two programs, and I should say that our most successful incubator farmers went through the reserve first and then the fellowship and now have an incubator farm. Sure. We'll give you um, for very low rents, like $250 a year, um, an eighth of an acre with the possible, a possible expansion to a quarter of an acre in future years, but an eighth of an acre of our farmland. And you can set up your independent farm there. You start your own business. You could be on this farm for three years. The benefit is that you get technical assistance from our professional farm staff. So when you run up against a problem on your farm, there's somebody there that can give you a quick answer. Um, you get market support because we have mobile markets that operate um, in Washington, D.C. So we're always looking for new farmers to source from. Um, and we have you know, lots of chefs and uh, lots of restaurants in the area and lots of neighbors who want to buy food. Um, and uh, and you get uh, access to our infrastructure. So we've got well, we've got a well, we've got power, we've got a greenhouse for the incubators, we've got some equipment for the incubators. So it's a way to sort of farm with training wheels on. And you can be on the, on the incubator for three years as a rule. And the magic of that number is that the USDA requires a beginning farmer to demonstrate three years of farm management experience before they can apply for a low interest loan from the farm service agency. And for veterans, that's actually only two years, but we think it's a really good idea to do all three years because you wanna learn hard lessons when it's not on your dime, right? And you wanna know that you don't wanna do this work before you buy the land. Um, or you want to know that you particularly enjoy growing um, one thing, but not this other. And you want to learn that before, again, you establish your farm. So, um, so that's, that's, the, that, that's the kind of three stages of that program. And um, the other thing that I should say that's really important about the reserve is that sort of farm academics, so everything a farmer needs to have between their ears as they're approaching their work, so it might be about how to crop plan or about pest control or soil science, botany, that sort of stuff. Um, and then we do hands-on cultivation. So the folks in the program will actually show up to the farm on certain of the weekends and we do work with them. Um, 
Then they also do uh, farm field trips, which are probably the most popular part of the whole program. And the field trips go to farms that are in our area, probably within, you know, like an hour to an hour and a half of DC. We try to keep them, we try to keep them pretty close. And, um, and we visit farmers who are doing the work and they are really honest about the time that they have to invest and the capital that they have to invest. And they share like all the lessons that they wish they knew when they got started so that our farmers can learn from the mistakes and experiences of others and they can not make the same ones uh, when mm -hmm. they get started. Um, we so. do really um, <clears throat> useful and intense business training for, for small farmers. Um, we've got a couple of really talented business trainers that'll take everything from like how to assess land and the kind of land that you want to buy and understanding all that financing down to how to set up your chart of accounts in QuickBooks because <clears throat> most small farms, if they fail, for the small farms that fail, it's usually because of their business practices and not because of their growing. Um, people have been growing food for 10,000 years. Uh, and so we know that folks can figure that out. The hard part is, is doing that in a way that does that, that actually makes a profit and allows you to, here's my cat, and allows you to live the kind of life that you want to live. The magic of the field trips on the Veteran Farmer Reserve Program is that it introduces you to uh, farmers who are, who are doing the work. And, um, and what we've seen are some really cool things develop out of that. We went to visit, he's actually a Navy veteran, but we didn't train. He was already farming and we found him, um, he was raising cattle. And one of our trainees in 2019 was really taken by this guy's operation and saw how he was doing it and also thought, I think I could probably do it a little bit better on this land. And I, from what he had learned about how to run cattle, he thought, I don't think this guy's doing it quite right, but he struck up a friendship with the guy and the guy leased him, subleased him a few of his acres. And he put, he brought a, a couple of cattle and he ran them on that property and then found that he really loved doing it. And he got some goats and now he owns a 17 acre uh, farm in Catlett, Virginia. And I just got off the phone with a member of uh, our incoming sort of class of fellows who is a Marine getting out of the Marine Corps. And he is going to actually intern on that farm so that he can learn about animal care because we don't really have livestock on our property. So he'll learn vegetables from us, but he's going to start there. So we have this connection of generations now of Arcadia veteran farmer trainees who are training each other. It's really an exciting development. I'm super excited about it. Your SkillBridge is a DOD program that pays you for your last up to six months in uniform, but usually it's like three months. As long as you're available to your command, you can go do, have an apprenticeship or an internship or whatever in your next field of work and still get your military pay and your military health and it all counts towards your military time. So we've had a couple of people roll through Arcadia on SkillBridge and they've been great. And these are folks who want to learn how to farm. And so they spend their last three to six months in uniform learning to farm with us. Yeah, the reserve program is the, is the sort of the big one that I mentioned. And it's just one weekend a month for 12 months. Um, and it's an all day on a Saturday and all day on a Sunday. And again, because it's such an interesting mix of folks who are already farming to people who are just thinking about it, we get a whole spectrum of, um, of experiences and they learn from each other. And so the folks who are already farming are able to immediately implement everything that we're teaching them and able to give real-time feedback that everybody else who's just thinking about doing it is going to learn from and be able to apply the next year or two years from now. So, um, so that's the reserve. It's, you just got to gut it out for one weekend a month for 12 months, but we always have the mobile market. So Arcadia's mobile markets are, is, it's our sort of premier food access intervention where 80% of the food that we grow on our farm is harvested, washed, packed, and sent up on our mobile markets to Washington, D.C., where it's sold in predominantly low-income neighborhoods um, that don't have access to fresh food on a regular basis and where people really you know, can't afford the quality of food that we are selling. And we work we, we make the price work for everybody through, because we're a nonprofit, we're able to raise money to offset the cost of, of the real food. So what you get in our mobile markets and the experience that you have in our mobile markets is as good or better than anything you would get at one of the fancy markets in DC. Yeah.